The Rokos R0139 Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711 homage. After owning this for two years, I got some stuff to tell you. Let's get into it. Hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? What's up, Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. I missed you guys and gals. If you miss me too, how about a thumbs up? Help me out. <laughs> help me help you. In case you guys are new to my channel, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? Yeah, I'm actually rocking the Rokos R0139. Now, if you've been following me since the very beginning, you know that this is the first watch I ever did a review on. And I did that because nobody else had reviewed it at the time. And this is a two year update. Is the watch even still working? <laughs> Would I buy it again? And has my, I guess, journey in watch collecting changed the way I feel about this piece? And I think you'll be surprised at some of the things that I have to say about this watch. So we're gonna flip the camera around and um, I'm gonna dive into that for you here. Okay guys, let's stop and just admire how gorgeous this watch is. I know it's an homage, but it's still one of my favorite homages I've had the pleasure to own and enjoy on the wrist. I think it's fair we start with the negatives or cons first that I've come across with this watch, and then we'll move on to the pros so we end on a positive note. And one of the biggest drawbacks for this watch, and it's a major one, is the water resistance of only 30 meters. <sighs> Come on. For being modeled after an iconic sports watch, you cannot get this in the water. And what could have been an amazing travel or vacation watch, the inability to take it to the beach or into a pool was such a huge bummer for me. The other issue I found myself unable to look away from is the fact that we're only getting a mineral glass crystal on this watch. And for being almost $200, this decision by Rokos has me puzzled. I mean, we know of many homage brands putting sapphire on watches that are sometimes in the sub $80 range. The mineral glass, it is crystal clear, and since I personally have not scuffed or scratched it, I think if you're careful with your watches, this may not be as concerning to you as it would be for many others. The next con is something that is more inherent with the design of the Nautilus itself, so what is a con for the Rokos would be just as much a con for the Patek, and that is the integrated bracelet. Luckily for me, about a year into owning this watch, I noticed that Amazon had the R0139 bracelet available for purchase. Knowing that there's a chance something could happen to my bracelet and it not be as simple as just swapping a strap onto the watch head, I pulled the trigger on this backup bracelet. For 31 bucks, I think it was a great buy, especially as they no longer offer them for sale at this time. And if I ever decide to sell this watch, I think having a backup bracelet is an excellent selling point. The last gripe I have is really a minor one, and it was something that initially I thought was a benefit of this watch when I purchased it, and that is the exhibition case back. You see, when I first got this watch, I was new to automatic watch movements. Just being able to see it through a crystal in the back was so amazing to me, and it might be for you too. But the movement being shown, the Seagull ST1612, is rather lackluster in its finishing and design. There's an unsigned rotor and no additional finishing applied to any of the movement components. And after handling many watches since this one, including some luxury pieces, I see now that this could have looked so much nicer. So if that's what's wrong with the watch, what did they get right? Well, it's actually quite a lot. First off, the taper on this bracelet is more aggressive than that of the original 5711, and it fits around my wrist just right. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, and the double deployment butterfly clasp has not given me any issues personally. They also paid attention to the finer details on the case and the bracelet. The thin beveled edges along the bracelet and on the case are quite impressive to me. The transitions between satin finish and polish are done so well. The brushing, as you see here, is also done very well. The dial is absolutely stunning, and while the color of blue is not the same as the true 5711, I actually think this hue is simply mesmerizing. The way the seconds hand fades into the black gradient shadows of the dial brings a smile to my face, as if time itself is playing hide and seek on my wrist. The finishing doesn't carry throughout the whole watch though. The Ray Hot has a bit of distortion to it, you know, I would have rather seen it be mirror polished or even brushed for a matte effect, and also the handset is a bit rough on the edges. Something I may not have cared to notice when first having the watch, after owning luxury pieces, I can tell right away that these are details that were simply overlooked. 
For the price, the movement accuracy is quite impressive. Considering that this has been on a watch winder for months with minimal wear, it still has an average accuracy of around 6 to 9 seconds per day. The beat error is a bit high, but I think when a servicing is due for this watch, if in the hands of a skilled watchmaker, it may be possible to have it regulated to even better accuracy. Now, would I buy this watch again? And for the price, it's hard to say. I think if you could get this on a deal, if you if you could get save some money on the actual price, I would say yes, if you really truly love it. I wish there were some things that Rokos would do to upgrade this watch and they could even charge 250, maybe upwards of $300 if they made some really significant upgrades. The first one being, of course, the sapphire crystal. Instead of mineral, if they put sapphire on here, that would be awesome. The movement, if they could go ahead and decorate this movement a bit better, have that gold plated or gold toned uh, rotor, just giving that, again, more uh, paddock vibes would be really awesome. And then lastly, water resistance. I mean, the whole point of a sports watch is to kind of be able to do everything with it, in my opinion. So I think if they could up the water resistance to at least 100 meters and then have the options either included as a package or a separate purchase option for a rubber or a leather strap or both, I think they would just absolutely kill it with this release, you know, screw down crown, if that helped with the water resistance, that would be kind of cool. But those are just some like small little things that if they upgraded, it would just be an absolute stunner. But what I'm actually thinking of doing is getting rid of this one. I don't know if I'm gonna sell it yet or give it away. We'll, we'll wait and see. But there's a brand called Ageloser, Ageloser Swiss, and they have a Lake Baikal. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Baikal. Um, <laughs> Put in the comments if I'm saying that wrong. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's fine. Anyways, it's kind of influenced by the 5711, but it's not a direct homage. The case shape's a little different. Um, it has a gradient and a different colored gradient uh, dials as well. It's just a beautiful piece, and the movement is decorated really nicely. I think it's got 80 hours of power reserve, and it's around $450 or so uh, new retail. And I'm really interested in getting that piece into the channel so I can review it. I don't know yet if I'm gonna pull the trigger on buying one. I've been reaching out to the brand and trying to get them to you know, provide one, um, but I haven't had much luck. So if you wanna see the Ageloser version, uh, please drop a comment down and hopefully they'll be able to see that, kind of see the demand for it and interest in it. And maybe that'll help get one into the channel for you guys to check out and me as well. So yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of me factor in that too. So I'm really interested in that watch. But regardless, thank you so much for checking out this review two years after buying the Rokos. It's still a great watch. It's working. It's doing awesome. And I think for the money, it's money well spent. I mean, you're this hasn't been scuffed up or damaged. So, you know, I haven't had any issues myself. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And of course, as always, I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Until then, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.